What are the best and worst TradingView indicators to make money? Well, in this video, I will be ranking 21 of the most popular TradingView indicators on a tier list. From S, which are the absolute best ones, all the way down to D, which are for the worst. And at the end of the video, I will crown one indicator as the winner and one indicator as the biggest loser. Alright guys, so we are very soon ready to start ranking all of these TradingView indicators from best to worst. But real, thick, uh, real quick before we start here, I think it's important to mention that of course this video is just my opinion, it's made for fun, not financial advice. But now then, let's begin here by ranking the ATR indicator. The ATR is one of these legendary indicators that lots of traders use. Um, if you don't know what the ATR indicator does, it basically measures volatility. And the ATR indicator has multiple use cases. For example, you can use the ATR to get mechanical rules where to place your stop loss, but also mechanical rules where to place your target. This is definitely uh, not a bad indicator. I do think I want to place this one somewhere here in the top But because personally, I actually don't use it that much um, So I definitely don't I can't place it on the S tier. I'm thinking actually maybe a tier for ATR This is a solid indicator. Many people are finding success with it uh, So I'm thinking a tier or B tier. Maybe I will flip around a bit later on in this video But let's begin here by placing it actually on the A tier. Next up here, we have the volume profile indicator. And after the volume profile, we have the standard volume. So the volume profile is basically an indicator that measures volume, but instead of measuring the volume for each candle, the volume profile measures volume for each level. So you can see at which levels on the chart uh, where the most stocks, uh, crypto or Forex, traded and this one i know that many traders are using and finding success with this indicator personally however i do prefer volume so i want to place volume above volume profile this might come as a surprise but i th i like to keep it simple i really like the volume indicator you see exact you know how much each candle is worth um, and volume is one of these indicators I use a lot and I do want to place volume here on A tier. I actually think I want to place it before ATR as well. But because I prefer volume over volume profile, um, I do want to place volume profile below volume. So I'm thinking actually a B tier or maybe even a C tier. Uh, but let's for now place it at B tier because I do know that many traders are finding success with the volume profile. Once again, this is not a, an indicator that I use too much. Next up guys, we have the MACD. The MACD is an indicator that I use a lot. Um, you might be, you're probably familiar with the MACD indicator. It measures momentum. One of my favorite use cases when it comes to the MACD is to use it to find divergence. Uh, I especially like the histogram divergence. I like the normal settings, but we have another setting of the MACD right here that we will rank as well. But I think that the MACD is a solid A. I use it a lot. It's great for finding momentum divergence. And because of this, because I use it so much, I want to actually place it even above volume. So, so far we have some great indicators, MACD, volume, ATR. All of these are good indicators that I uh, like so all of these are A's but I don't really uh, I would not really consider this one uh, an S tier yet so you know stay tuned for the S tier ones all right so now you might wonder what is the 31016 MACD well this is also the MACD but this are different settings these are the settings that got uh, I think got popular popularized by Linda Rashke and they are especially good for finding these momentum moves or these impulsive moves that we want to look out for before the price pulls back. So you can also use this in uh, these settings to find divergences, but the 3, 10, 16 settings are especially good to find impulsive moves and trading pullbacks is a great trading strategy. So once again, guys, I'm thinking of an A for this indicator. But the question now is, 
do I want to place it above the normal MACD? Well, let's actually, yeah, let's for now place it above the normal MACD. I don't really know if I would say that either one is better than the other uh, because they basically have uh, slightly different use cases and can be used in different scenarios. But now then, now we have an indicator called auto candlestick patterns. So this is an indicator you can find in TradingView if you guys have the paid TradingView plan. And by the way, guys, if you for some reason don't have TradingView yet, I will make sure to leave a link down in the description, the top of the description and the top comments. And you can use that link to try TradingView Premium for free for 30 days and you will also get a $15 bonus. So uh, by doing that, you can try out all the indicators you can see right here. But auto candle patterns, I really like this indicator because it's great at finding candlestick patterns. Um, and you know, they can find pretty much all candlestick patterns automatically. However, I'm hesitant to place this one on an A because I have found that this indicator will not always find all patterns uh, that you know, I would consider, uh, at least I would consider patterns. So I can't really place this one at uh, an A tier. I would po probably go for a B tier here with the auto candle pattern. Still a solid indicator, but not one of these indicators that are completely wow. I do think even, you know, even if you're using this indicator, I really do think it's important to learn about candlestick patterns on your own. But all right, so now we have reached some moving averages. We have the simple moving average, the hull moving average, and the exponential moving average. And now where should I place the simple moving average? Well, if you have been following uh, the channel here for a while, you might be familiar that I'm not the biggest fan of moving averages in general. So if we only look at the simple moving average as a standalone indicator, I don't really like this one that much. I would say it's a C, um, you know, I can't really place it at a D tier, but I would probably place it at a C tier right here, because what a moving average is, is that it's basically, you know, especially the simple moving average, it's just, you know, the average of the last X amount of candles. But at the same time, moving averages are used in indicators like the MACD. So they are definitely not useless. So I can't place it at a D tier. I think that the SMA is for sure, uh, you know, a C tier here. All right, so before we continue here, I want to give a big shout out to all our new channel members. You guys are making these videos possible. I spend a lot of time and effort on these videos, so if you want to give back while at the same time getting access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking join below this video or on the channel page. Now let's jump back into the course. As for the next moving average, the whole moving average, this one has a much more complicated calculation and the calculation is made here to try to try to improve the responsiveness of the moving average while at the same time making it more smooth. And I do think that the whole moving average succeeds quite well with this one. So I am thinking to actually place it above the SMA. The question here if, is if the HMA can actually crawl up to a B tier here or if I should set it at a C tier as well. Well, let's for now actually place it at a C tier because we also have the, um, we also have the exponential moving average right here. Once again, this is the same problem as with the SMA. Uh, let's place it a bit higher because I know that more traders are using the exponential moving average. The exponential mov moving average is used in the normal MACD calculation. So it's definitely not used less, but uh, I have a hard time placing the moving averages, you know, as standalone indicators higher than C tier, at least for now. But all right, so what about the auto chart patterns indicator? This one is similar to the auto candlestick patterns uh, in that, you know, the goal of this pattern is to automatically find chart patterns. But this indicator is definitely more advanced than the candlestick pattern indicator because finding chart patterns is more complicated. And in order to do this, you will need something called pivot points. 
that are used in many indicators. And as you can see, we will talk about pivot points later on. This one I'm very excited to talk about. But the auto chart patterns, I do want to place above the auto candle patterns because of the more complicated calculations. And this one can be really helpful to find chart patterns. And also, this indicator automatically finds target levels as well. So definitely a more complicated, more sophisticated indicator right here. I'm actually going to place the auto chart patterns at the A tier here. Uh, however, for now, I do think the ATR is more significant. I do think volume and MACD is more significant as well. But this one actually crawls up to the A tier here. All right, so now then, what about the RSI? This is probably one of the most well-known indicators. This one also measures momentum. And I really like the simplicity of the R RSI. So I'm thinking that the RSI is actually an A tier here. However, do I like it more than the MACD? Well, that's a hard question. I think for now, um, I might actually place the RSI right here. It's hard to say. I actually use the RSI and the MACD a lot. I like when the signals are, you know, for example, when we see divergence on both the RSI and the MACD at the same time, I consider that a stronger divergence signal compared to if we only see it on the MACD. So I like to use both the MACD and the RSI. Uh, but you know, this one is hard. Um, let's just place it right there for now and see if we will change the position later on. But all right, guys, so what about Fibonacci retracements? This one, another very, very popular tool here. However, do I actually think Fibonacci retracements are very useful? Well, they, you know, especially if you are a beginner, I would say that the Fibonacci retracements can be very useful to sort of learn how the market tends to move. When we see an impulsive move, the market tends to pull back around 60 to 40 percent and for that reason Fibonacci retracements can be used however you know as you get more and more experienced you will be able to see these sort of Fibonacci retracements without really having them on the chart so I definitely don't think I can put Fibonacci retracement on the A tier the question is can we even put it on the B tier right here well I do think the Fibonacci can go here on the B tier. I'm placing it below volume profile. Uh, and this is because I definitely can see how Fibonacci retracements, uh, you know, can be definitely be useful, especially if you are not used to, you know, how the market tends to move. But now then, now we have something called Fibonacci cir circles. And I gotta say that I'm not familiar with this one. I haven't been using this one a lot, but I have been checking out the indicator a little bit. And from what I have seen, guys, I definitely can't place this one on a B tier. I'm not sure I even can place this one on a C tier. So this might actually be our first D tier right here. Because Fibonacci circles are basically, they try to incorporate both price and time into the Fibonacci calculations. So uh, I can put up an image right here so you can see how it works it it goes the fibonacci levels goes both up and to the right and i have a hard time seeing how this indicator will help you read price at the end of the day what all indicators aim to do is to make the charts easier to read and easier to analyze and i think that one of these uh, and i think that this indicator is one of these indicators that makes the chart more complicated and will be confusing but as I said, I don't, I haven't used this indicator a lot. Uh, I have just taken a look, quick look at it. So if you guys are using Fibonacci circles and are finding success with it, just let me know down in the comments. As I said, this tier list is definitely not a true, you know, factual uh, tier list. This is just my personal opinion and, you know, the tier list I'm making here on the spot. But all right, so what about trend channels here you might be a little bit surprised but i don't think i can place the trend channels even on the b tier i actually think i have to place trend channels here on the c tier and the question is do i want to place it above or below 
the moving averages. I think I'm placing it above the moving averages, but still on C tier. And the reason we have trend channels at, <coughs> at this tier is because yes, trend channels can be useful. It's not that trend channels are useless. However, I do personally think it's much more important to learn market structure and have some rules to find your trends rather than trying to fit your you know trend lines perfectly to a trend channel because using trend lines will always be uh, so uh, subjective and everyone's trend channels will look differently so the question here is how predictive are they however i don't find that, that i can place them all the way down at d tier um but you know c tier i think it's a it's a solid um, uh, you know, placement for trend channels. And I guess this one might surprise some of you guys, but you know, yes, they can be useful, but are they, you know, the best, you know, indicator or tool? Not really in my opinion. But now guys, now we have an indicator called pivot points high and low. And this is one of these indicators that I have made videos about. And when I make videos about this indicator, some, some comments will always say, you know, uh, this is a useful indicator because it's lagging and so on and so on. But this guys, in my opinion, is my first S tier indicator. And why is this the case? Well, first of all, if you look at, you know, multiple, multiple complicated indicators, maybe some sort of smart money concepts indicators or even the auto, uh, the auto chart patterns and many, many other indicators. In order to build these indicators, you, you need some kind of rule for pivot points. You need some kind of rule to base your pivot points on. So first of all, this indicator is very important uh, and is a building block of many other indicators. And secondly, I find that this indicator can be very useful in finding sort of the most significant market structure. So you can, for example, use this indicator to find the key support and resistance levels. So what are the most important levels that the price have actually been struggling with the past? You can use pivot points for that. And pivot points have many other use cases as well. So, you know, I, I do think that this is one of these indicators that belong on the S tier. But yeah, guys, if you disagree with, with me, just let me know down in the comments. I'm definitely, I have nothing against that. I definitely see how, you know, maybe some of you guys will place this one at D tier. I don't know. But this, in my opinion, is an S tier indicator. What about, uh, but what about the Fibonacci extensions? As you already know, we have been talking about Fibonacci retracements. Fibonacci extensions, in my opinion, might actually be a little bit better here. And you might wonder why. Well, the Fibonacci extensions can be used in a pretty similar manner as the retracements, uh, but in this case, we're using it to find the targets. And one use case that Fibonacci extensions has that Fibonacci retracements uh, don't have is that if an asset, like you know a cryptocurrency or Forex or whatever, breaks to a new all-time high, if that happens, we don't have many tools to find target levels. And this is one of these use cases when Fibonacci extensions can come in. Because when you use the Fibonacci extension, you can find target levels beyond all-time high levels. It can also be used if something is not at an all-time high, but it can definitely be used to find target levels beyond these levels. And the question you might ask yourself here is, you know, is there any kind of truth value to the Fibonacci levels or does this indicator work because many other traders are using Fibonacci as well? And that question I leave to you guys to discuss. However, if a lot of traders are looking at Fibonacci extensions levels and use them, that can on its own actually lead to the price reacting to these levels. So I'm actually gonna place, place Fibonacci extension just slightly above retracement. But all right, so what about Fibonacci channels. So Fibonacci channels are basically like trend channels, but in these channels, we have the Fibonacci levels. And the question here is, would I place Fibonacci channels above trend channels? Well, this is one of these indicators that I do think just makes the concept more complicated. I think the Fibonacci levels inside the channels 
definitely make this one more complicated I'm, and I'm probably going to place this one all the way down at D. I much prefer the, fib, the normal clean Fibonacci retracements over the Fib channels. So this is a D tier in my opinion. All right, so now last but not least we have some, this is not really an indicator, this is more like general technical analysis concepts. And first up on the list we have smart money concepts. And here one problem with smart money concept is that I can't really find a solid definition of what is actually smart money concepts. You know, some traders says it's this, some traders says it's that. And from what I have learned here, smart money concepts basically seem to be, uh, you know, just concepts that we already know from traditional technical analysis, but it's teached in using different words and in a different manner. So in smart money concepts, there are definitely useful things you can learn. And there are maybe some new concepts you can learn as well, but this is mostly just uh, old concepts uh, repackaged in sort of different terms. So it's definitely a useful concept to learn, but is it something new that deserves an S tier? Well, not really. So I think I'm gonna play smart money concepts here just in the middle, uh, you know, as a B tier. But now then, what about price action? Price action is basically the study of how the price moves right now. And you might be surprised, well, where, do I th where do you think our price, price action? Well, it goes straight to S tier. It goes straight to S tier. Because in my opinion, this is one of the most important concepts you can learn as a trader. And because this concept is so important, it's also one of the concepts that takes time to learn. In order to be good at price action trading, you need to spend a lot of time in front of the chart and learn you know, how the price moves. And if you don't really know what price action is, I like to think about a price action as micro, or in other words, what is the price moving right now? while market structure, which is right here, market structure is how the price have moved in the past. So for example, if you think about a, uh, a resistance level, the actual level I would consider market structure, uh, market structure, while how the price reacts to that level, I would consider price action. So now you might of course wonder where do I place market structure here? Is market structure as important as price action? Uh, I still wanna place market structure in S tier, but I do think I place market structure just one step to the right of price action. Market structure is also very important and you know, pretty much most of the indicators here are actually some combination of price action and market structure. So if you master both price action and market structure, you might even need most of these indicators. You might be able to read the price on your own and don't need the indicator. So I think that both market structure and price action are clear S tier uh, concepts here. And you might notice that this is not really, you know, indicators anymore. This is more like broader concepts, but I still think they are very important to include. But all right, last but not least, we have support and resistance, probably the most common, the most overused, and you know everyone that hears about technical analysis hears about support and resistance. And this is one of these concepts that I think if used correctly can be very good, maybe even start to creep up at S tier, but if you use it not correctly, this can be one of these concepts that make uh, the chart harder to read. Uh, you know, maybe you have too many support and resistance lines or you know, you don't know how to use support and resistance. This can be one of these concepts that just make it more complicated. But I do think, you know, in general, if you really learn support and resistance, this is a solid concept. I think I'm gonna place it at A tier. The question here is, you know, where on A tier will I place it? Well, let's just place it right here. It's a solid concept, uh, but it's not, you know, as high as, for example, market structure, because in my opinion, support and resistance is, you know, included in market structure. But all right guys, so this video is coming to an end now and before we wrap up, I wanna thank you all so much for watching. 
I also want to give a big, big shout out to all channel members. You guys are the sponsors of this channel and you make these videos possible. So if you like the channel and want to give back for all the free content I have made, please consider being a channel member by clicking join either below this video or on the channel page. And also guys, when you are ready to learn more about training and technical analysis, I highly recommend to check out this playlist right here. But for now, take care. Ciao, ciao.